Hi, and welcome to the digital job site where the boards are straight, the weather is great, and there really is a board stretcher. This is the video tour du jour for the exploring octagonal roof framing with SketchUp uh, post at the digital job site at findhomebuilding.com. And in this tutorial, this first video section, just want to explore the various framing members and their uh, the way they are attached to each other to form an octagonal roof. And in this, the model I created for this tutorial that you're looking at here is just a straightforward octagon, framed walls, no openings or anything, uh, windows, doors, etc. Basically because I'm focusing on the framing of the roof itself in this sort of construction. So, to get going on this, you can see I've kind of opened the model up and left some of the sheeting off the walls and roof to get a better look at the inside of it and how the components come together. I'm going to turn off the shadows here so that the model speeds up. And I've layered various things in this model so that we can peel it back a layer at a time and look at the different components and rafters and things that, that make up this sort of a roof. So I'll go up in here to the layers and take a few things out, hide a few things. I'm going to take the 1 by 8 sheeting off the roof to open that up. And I think we'll take off the wall sheeting. Let's see, I'll just take out the wall framing, which is the studs in this case. And I'll zoom in here as I delete the wall sheathing, or I not delete, but hide the wall sheathing layer, and you can see up here that the rafters, the birds and mouse in these rafters are notched out so that they'll clear the half inch sheathing that leaves a space in, in between. Typically the walls would be sheeted first before the rafters are fit and attached. That's why the bird's mouth is a little bit bigger. And let's see, let's take out the floor that I have in here. I have the floor in here. Well, let's just go like this. Let's hide this for now. I was thinking I put that on a layer and maybe I didn't. So we'll just hide it for now. Which leaves us just with our octagonal roof framing. And I'm going to roll that back here by taking out the ceiling joists and the rafters. And so I've got fascia in here somewhere. There's the fascia. So that leaves just the octagonal plates. If I go in here to view hidden geometry and unhide these things, then I can show you how the, the bottom plates, if we use the move tool and raise these up, can see that the bottom and top plates are identical and basically in the, in the way this would be framed would be framing the deck, sheathing the deck, uh, using plates and building the walls before setting any rafters on there. And if you notice on these drawings, just to organize them, organize the different pieces and help align them, I've got in these different um, groups and components. I've, I have a center marking. See this little mark? And I use that as a, a point at center of the octagon so that I can easily pick up and, and move these various pieces and getting, get them to index and align with each other. So those dots aren't part of the construction. They're just part of the model in SketchUp that helps create the model and align the parts. But uh, the main point here is for an octagon roof, we have a set of uh, octagon plates. Each side is equal in length. And in this case, they turn out to be 64 and 1964. So it's that little more than a quarter inch uh, in length. Each of the octagon faces is the same. And the first uh, part of this 
uh, as far as building a model and understanding the geometry is this piece that I call an octagon core, which on a typical roof, that's the ridge, the ridge beam or the ridge board, as you would call it. But on an octagon, it ends up just being uh, one method is to just make it a core. And in this model, I chose to make the core eight-sided. And the reason I did that was for the primary common rafters. And a common rafter runs perpendicular to a plate, which is what we have here. Eight plates, eight common rafters that's run, run up into this center core piece. And like I said, if, the, if this was a typical roof, that would be a ridge board. But I made that core for the model's sake and also a good way to, to frame is to make this core with eight facets. Each facet is an inch and a half wide so that the rafters fit neatly on those, on those faces to help align the structure with the common rafters centered on a plate down here and nailed onto that core, this whole roof will come out geometrically correct, assuming that the, that the octagon is true and it's level, that sort of thing. So the exploration continues here. We've covered the plates. This is the primary common rafters. And the next step in framing this sort of roof, well, would be putting in the ceiling joists, which are these. But I'm going to leave those out for now. We can, just because this is a digital model in the real world, those ceiling joists need to be in there to, to keep the integrity of, of the walls. But for explanation purposes, I'm just going to leave those hidden for now and look at the next batch of rafters, if you will, which are I've got here in a layer called 45 degree hips. In a typical roof, regular hip roof, uh, like I covered in the model and measured series, and uh, touched on briefly in the off-angle roof framing series. Those rafters are typically, hip rafters are typically at 45 degrees to the wall plates. And unless in the, the off-angle one, it was a, it was a um, somewhat random angle that those rafters ran at. Nevertheless, the point is that the hip rafters will bisect the angle that they're, um, that they're dividing. In this case, it ends up being these run 45 degrees to the plates, which we, if we take the um, protractor tool, click on the, um, click on the, the plate. Let's see if I can get this to get on this little the intersection there, here, click against this, they, um, they actually run at 22 and a half degrees. I've been saying 45, but it's 22 and a half because they're bisecting a, essentially a 45 degree angle. So I stand corrected and uh, should probably rename the layer here uh, 22 and a half degree hips but I'm thinking of them as bisecting the 45 degree angle. Nevertheless, that's the next set of rafters that are used to create this type of roof. And when I zoom in towards the top here, you can see that these hips have a, a very sharp uh, top plumb cut angle on them. Let's see, let's take one of these and move it out to see what I'm talking about. So these are or sharp angles. Those are a bit difficult to cut uh, on the job site with a with a skill saw. It can be done. It's a little tricky. But if a person was to make this block in the center, make it 16-sided, and each one of the 16 faces would be an inch and a half, then all of these, these first 16 rafters, the eight commons and the eight hips, could all fit against that block with just a regular plumb cut. But those are some of the things that are involved in framing this sort of roof. The next set of rafters uh, that would be needed in a roof of this size, I set up as the 
secondary common rafters here in this model which show up when I click those in the layers dialog box and what those are is just 16 inches off the commons 16 inch on center which is standard framing they could be 24 inches or whatever the structural design or structural requirements would be but in this case I just show them at 16 inches on center and that allows for uh, strength in the, the sheeting that's used to cover the roof. But each one of these eight faces has two of two rafters of this length, and these are just a mirror image of each other, a left and a right, same length, same angles, everywhere, and they're just duplicated around the octagonal roof. And because of the size of this the gazebo I chose to use for this model and if I go to one of these center points and to the outside this is uh, 78 it's about um, 7 foot 4 to these faces I, I not I don't remember which uh, diameter I chose for these points but what I'm getting at is that the larger or the longer each of the eight faces of the octagon are the more sets of rafters are required to maintain the 16 inch on center spacing. So when I put in the tertiary common rafters, to put a fancy name on them, you can see how the 16 inch center on center spacing is carried out until the distance between the last rafter and the hip is less than 16 inches. A bigger octagon would require more sets of rafters, a smaller would require fewer. And the idea is that each one of these rafter groups, let's see if I can get one of these to separate out here and I'm not going to get it that way. Not too bad though. I'm just going to pull one of these out to look at. Take this hip rafter out of here. So in uh, in this relation or this perspective each one of the facets of the oct octagonal roof is actually just like a mini um, gable roof or standard roof and with uh, that that's all one slope and one roof at one pitch and I'm pretty sure in this roof I used a 712 pitch but it gives you an idea how the rafters when they're all assembled look fairly complex but when you dissect it or explore a little bit, separate some of these things out, it's, it's easier to understand. So with all the rafters uh, in place, I'm going to go up in here and put fascia on here. We'll show, bring the fascia back and can see how uh, the fascia is mitered 22 and a half degrees at each of the hips and the level cut here for the soffit etc. All these cuts line up for a nice flat surface and go ahead and put the ceiling joists in at this point so you can see how the one set of joists run side to side uh, completely side to side which would give the roof or the structure strength and then the intermediate joists are run uh, next to this to the rafters so they can tie in these are just turned at 45 degree angle it, that gives enough nailing surface for paneling or sheetrock or whatever might be used on the ceiling and uh, this is just one way of doing it it's fairly straightforward and effective but there's plenty of reasons that that might get built differently and notice here that I've doubled up I show these main ceiling joists doubled up because they're carrying extra ceiling load from the sides of that ceiling structure. But that gives a pretty good idea of how that roof goes together. We'll put the sheathing on the roof and for whatever reason I just made it one by eights. It would probably be plywood but it was fun drawing the boards with SketchUp so I just put in all one by eight sheathing there and then just to dress up the model, put the wall framing, wall studs in there and the wall sheathing. And looks like I got this set of plates moved out of 
position at some point in the discussion here, so we'll just move him back up. I've got something moved there. I must have raised or lowered something. Oh, okay, that, those plates aren't high enough yet, so just bump those up. That was it. Okay. Now I'm happy. Anyways, so that's uh, the things that are involved in framing an octagonal roof. I mean, this one is neatly a standalone roof. Often in construction, there's a, an octagonal bump out where a hip roof or a gable roof might intersect this, which complicates the, the framing, but the geometry really stays the same. So I hope that's beneficial, helpful. I'll upload this model under, um, let's see, I'll put it under octagonal, uh, exploring octagonal roof framing with SketchUp. I'll put it in the Trimble SketchUp component warehouse under that title. If you search that out at the component warehouse, you can download this model and, and work with what I've shown you here. I'm going to do another uh, video as part of the exploring octagonal roof framing with SketchUp blog post at the digital job site. In that tutorial, I'll go through some of the techniques that I used to build to create this model in SketchUp. There you have it for now. Thanks for stopping by the digital job site.